Since the trade deadline happened over a month ago, the Los Angeles Lakers have been the best defensive team in the NBA, allowing just 111.5 points every 100 possessions. A big component in that has been the addition of Jared Vanderbilt, a forward who exemplifies the value of defensive versatility and flexibility in the most offensively slanted era of basketball we've ever seen. Vanderbilt is one of the highest motored players this league has to offer, displaying extreme energy as he just flies all over the court to recover and save plays. As Luka backs down a smaller Beasley, he roams over to offer a second body, and when the ball gets skipped to the opposite wing, he immediately shoots the gap to eliminate an extra pass and take it all the way home. He starts this possession matched up with Brandon Ingram in a horn set, staying attached to him through the initial action before seamlessly switching on to Dyson Daniels. Now with Ingram in a favorable matchup, they turn this into a ball screen, but Vando's right there at the nail to take away Ingram's pull-up jumper. But a kickout doesn't even create an advantage because of how quickly he recovers to the perimeter, staying attached to Daniels as he forces him into help near the middle before peeling into yet another switch all the way out to the corner where he's able to run Herb Jones off the line into a tough attempt down low. This ability to just cover so much ground and switch onto literally anyone who poses a threat is a massive boost for any defense in today's game that's primed on spacing the floor for constant movement, extra passing, and screening actions to attack weaker links, and it's all made possible by his physical profile. He's listed at 6'8", with a 7'1 wingspan, having the build of a modern day 4, yet he moves like a smaller wing. He's incredibly agile, not just laterally, but when moving forward or back, and his hips are super flexible, which allows him to swivel and swing his body all over the place as he turns to cut off attack angles. Regardless of momentum, he's in total control of his body, changing speeds and directions as need be, and rarely ever losing balance. That is, until he has to deal with more powerful creators. Despite being on the taller side, he weighs just 214 pounds, and while being so light on the feet allows for this sort of incredible combination of mobility and flexibility, a lack of lower body strength does leave him vulnerable to contact. It's not a huge problem, but I do think it pops at times when defending downhill attacks or in the post. Another thing that skinnier build helps with is dodging screens. He's someone who can squeeze over the pick and roll and run shooters off the line which gives him a ton of utility at the point of attack and he does a pretty good job of staying attached away from the ball as he chases wings all over the court. In these spots he's a bit indecisive at times choosing his preferred path just a touch too late which can result in offensive players getting a step or him making contact with the screener, but because he's so switchable, this oftentimes doesn't even lead to a big advantage. And switching isn't even always necessary because of how good he is at recovering and playing from behind. Valanchunas connects with him on this one while AD's in a drop, but because of that length, he's able to time a near perfect contest on one of the league's more incontestable pull-up jump shooters. It's not just on contests where he's making his presence known though. He bites on a jab step and gets beat off the dribble, only to extend his arm to its maximum reach and somehow get a hand on the ball, turning this into a much tougher finish. His hands are really active when defending on the ball, constantly looking for opportunities to swipe at or poke it out from unsuspecting attackers, although he can get a bit overzealous at times and commit some pretty avoidable fouls. Those active hands also help him take away routine passes, switching onto McCollum and recognizing that there's a huge mismatch and snatching what appears to be a routine entry pass. It's his anticipation that makes these sort of defensive reads possible. Instead of staying attached to Ingram around an off-ball screen, he chooses an inside angle where he can jump the lane, and he's able to consistently get a hand on the ball in these spots due to a combination of those lightning quick hands along with that length and some perfect timing. In transition, he slides down to take away a cut to the basket, and Dame realizing this thinks he can easily get the ball to the opposite wing, but Vando seemingly in two places at once, 
and saves it from going out of bounds. His reaction time is ridiculous. When Ja releases this pass, it appears to be an easy entry as he's not in the lane at all, but in just a split second, he's almost parallel to the ground as he reaches across his body for the steal. His ability to play lane so well also helps him eliminate a fair amount of advantages. Olenek jumps a pass himself, but isn't able to get a hand on it, creating a 2 on 1 for Houston to attack. So Vando jabs at Smith to make him pick up his dribble and throw a pass that he's able to easily get a hand on. This is a testament to his positioning as a help defender. That motor and constant energy I referenced is most noticeable in these moments where he's asked to rotate and turn away other threats, where he's always active. As Barrett slashes to the cup, Gabriel is forced to step over and prevent a layup, while Vando slides down from the corner to take away Hartenstein on the roll. It's not completely out of his nature to be a bit too focused on his individual matchup, here staying attached to Ingram even though he's the screener, meaning there's nobody in position to turn away CJ's drive. But again, his reaction time and agility do a good job at making up for this, covering up a breakdown on the backdoor cut where he can meet Thompson with verticality. He's not much of a shot blocker at all, but he gets off the floor very quickly for a decent vertical presence that when paired with his height and length, allow him to offer a decent amount of resistance at the rim. But before we get into that, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis and the making of this video. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics to further guide your understanding of the sport. For the purpose of this video, I can look in great detail at the nuances of defensive versatility, varying by role, position, or even how involved they are in the offense, and I can decipher in great detail how Vanderbilt fares against the rest of the league. By signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription, so I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested. And with that being said, let's take a look at Vando's paint defense. Because most of his rim protection comes from how quickly he's able to get up and alter shots, he does have a tendency to bite on up fakes. And due to not having the size of a true big man, if he's not in the right position, it's harder for him to make a difference. Sometimes he can do everything right, but is just limited, rotating from the weak side to clean up a roll to the basket and timing his jump perfectly, but just getting out muscled on the finish. For someone to protect the rim at lesser size, positioning is key. As Harden gets into a pick and roll, he's playing that left side of the screen as Embiid rolls, but when the ball gets swung to the wing, he immediately moves to the opposite side where he can change the path of a drive and attack the layup with his lane. As McHale beats his man with a backdoor cut, Vandal slides over to take away a downhill finish, and after forcing a kick out, he rotates again to meet another attacker, this time using that verticality to alter the attempt. Due to his limitations, he's not someone you'd want as your primary paint defender, but as a backline guy, he will make some nice rotations to offer another legit line of defense, allowing him to serve as a really effective secondary or even tertiary rim protector on high level team defenses. The main reason he's able to execute this role so well is that mobility. He covers so much ground that he can make some really nice help plays while still recovering to shooters when needed. Minnesota runs a supersized pick and roll at a disadvantaged Utah who has two guards in the action. So Vanderbilt slides down to take away Reed on the roll before shooting back to the corner in time to counter a skip pass and get a hand up on the shooter. His closeouts are hard and aggressive, yet another display of that non-stop energy. But because he has such amazing body control and hip mobility, he's not really giving up anything when shooters put it down for attacks off the catch. He rotates deep into the paint to tag Shangun on a roll, and in two long strides is right back to the top of the key completely in balance, not giving Jabari an inch of room on the drive as he forces a missed layup. 
This time, he actually goes to jump a passing lane, but is unable to get there in time, and it almost breaks my mind to think about how he's able to just slam the brakes and remain in perfect position to defend in isolation. He's also really smart about the angles he chooses when closing out, knowing he's covering two players here, so he plays in between them, where his length and active hands are able to take away both a three-point shot and extra pass to the corner. He's really just a jack of all trades when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, and can take on a vast array of roles both on and off the ball, depending on who's sharing the court with him, making him one of the league's most versatile defenders and an incredibly valuable role player. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Jared Vanderbilt and just how valuable you believe he is to the Lakers. As always, I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.